Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Student Zone session here at Microsoft Build. I'm Justin, I'm a principal cloud advocate here at Microsoft, and I hope you all just caught Jen Looper's amazing session, Go for Olympic Gold with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. If you haven't, all of our sessions are available on demand, including the next ones and all of the Build sessions as well. Well, speaking of Olympics, one of my very favorite sports is basketball. And I think what's amazing about basketball as an Olympic support is that every person gets to represent their own country and come together in a big tournament. And that's the subject of our next session here, Build a Space Jam, a new legacy gathering hub with JavaScript. I'm super excited to share it. Just a reminder that uh, this session is part of the Microsoft Digital Code of Conduct uh, you can see it in the chat. Please read it. Be kind to everyone. And let's get started. So now I'd like to introduce Aicha and Waldeck. Thanks for joining us and take it away. Hi, Justin. I hope you're doing great. Hey, everyone. We are so excited to be here today with Waldeck, and we will be covering Build a Space Jam New Legacy Gathering Hub using JavaScript. My name is Aicha Bush. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft, and Waldeck, my colleague, is joining us in the session too. Hi, Waldeck. Hi, everybody. Hi, Aicha. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to be here. And yourself? Yeah, I'm doing great too. Did you get a chance to catch up some build sessions? Absolutely. Like, like there are, and there, are and there are a few of them that I that I saw, which were re really awesome to see. So excited. Yeah, me too. I got really excited and passionate about new features coming up with all these technologies across Microsoft. So I'm really excited to start trying some of these. So today in the session, we are going to build a um, hub for Toon Squad fans using JavaScript, Microsoft Graph, and Teams. But before we jump into building the app, coding, and having some fun, the first question is, what is Microsoft Graph, Waldeck? Yeah, so when you work or are at school, like you send email, you create meetings, you create files, and you work together with others. And all of the content you, 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 you create, you store uh, on Microsoft 365, right? So Microsoft Graph is basically the API that allows you to access all of the content you create, whether it's emails, whether it's calendar appointment, whether it's files or anything else you create at school or at work, you can access that through the Microsoft Graph. This is incredible. So every day when I use emails, uh, Outlook app, when I use Teams, when I chat with my colleagues, also let's say I use Planner to create some tasks in the projects, this data is available in Microsoft 365 Cloud and I can access to this data using Microsoft Graph API. Is that true? Correct. Awesome. So as you know, we have different apps for each and every Microsoft 365 product, such as Outlook. We have Outlook Calendar. Um, we also have Planner, Teams. So does that mean we have to use different APIs for each one of them? No, actually not, right? So the great thing is, is that even though it feels a lot like you um, check your email in Outlook, you plan meetings in Outlook, but you collaborate with others in Teams and you work with files in SharePoint, right? So these very much feel like different apps, but they are all a part of Microsoft 365. And the cool thing is, is that Microsoft Graph is a single API to all the data that, that you create in these apps. So even though they are different, they still very much are exposed the same way through the Microsoft Graph being the single endpoint you, you get. Wow, this is amazing. So we will just use one single endpoint, one single API to get all data from Microsoft 365, even though if you would like to get tasks, mails, calendar events, so on and so forth, everything about Microsoft 365 is accessible using one single endpoint. This is amazing. So in our app today, we are going to use this amazing uh, API too, which is Microsoft Graph. Let's check out how does this work. Before we move forward, how does this work in the background? What we would like to do is actually build an app 
which gathers all of the, let's say, files, calendars. But why do we do that? Well, like, I'm going to give you one scenario and just let us know if uh, we can build this or not. So all right. here is my Teams. And as you see, uh, we all are here. Bucks Bunny already created a event here uh, in the Teams group. And if you check out the um, group in Teams, you see everyone is in this group. Marvin, Penelope, you see Lola uh, is here too. We have Granny. So think of everyone in Toon Squad. What we would like to do is, as you know, we all are NBA fans. We would like to create a hub in this group uh, in Teams to check out uh, upcoming NBA games. Also, we would like to create uh, watch parties internally just to catch up with friends. As you know, we are not able to travel anymore, so we would like to gather in a Teams meeting and maybe watch together all these NBA games. Also, we would like to see in the same app, we would like to see who is in this Toon Squad fans group, as well as maybe we can get some buddies to show us around uh, what is new in this group, so on and so forth. Is this possible to build such an app? Absolutely, right. And the cool thing is, right. So we can build 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 a, this, this app exactly as you said. But the cool thing is, is that we don't need to let's say re-implement everything from scratch. We don't need to ask everybody to create new account for our app. We don't need to build database. We don't need to build a calendar to keep track of games and parties. We don't need to store the data elsewhere because the data that we already uh, or that we need is already available to us in Microsoft 365. We can use the building blocks that we have available in Microsoft 365 and the Microsoft Graph to build this this app. And and in fact, we actually already have done. So shall we have a look? Yeah, let's get our hands dirty. Let's start writing some code. Perfect. Let me share my screen. And here is the app that we have built, right? So here on 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 the left hand side, we see the list of all fans. And again, these fans are coming from exactly the same team that we have just seen in Teams. These are all the same users that we have there. In fact, if you see right on top, I am signed in as Marvin. And with that, I use the account that I already have. So it, this is not a different account. It shows my picture that I already have in Microsoft 365 and is the same person. So no different accounts, right? Yes, so you just use Marvin, the same Marvin in Teams group, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I don't know about you, Aicha, but like if I am new somewhere, uh, I always find it hard to find my way around things because it seems like there is 20 million things that are new and just finding my way around like what is what, where is what, is always hard. So I always appreciate the ability to have a body, somebody who's been around for longer than I am and can show me around, can help me meet new folks um, um, and and other things, right? So we also offer this ability in this app. Uh, shall we try to find a body for Marvin? Mar Totally, but um, I, I totally agree with the point. It is always better shoving around uh, be, be, if we have a buddy and shoving us around what is available, what's not is great. And especially if we find a buddy in our own time zone, it would be easier for us to hang out because we are um, sleeping in the same time, waking up in the same time. But how are you going to do that uh, for Marvin? Because he's coming from Mars. Right, so for that, we thought that as opposed to bringing everybody to Mars, we feel like, how about we bring bring him to Earth, right? So let's see Better. where he he um, 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 arrived and who's going to be his buddy. So let's click okay. this option. And it's Duffy. Awesome. There you go. Right? So we uh, have just so found, found. Yeah, exactly. So we have just found Marvin a buddy. And again, that's a, that's one of the fans that we already have in our app. That's nothing new. Now, if we go on in, in our app, another thing that we said, like this app works around games, like we are all NBA fans. So we wanted to say, hey, like what if we would offer an in-place overview of the upcoming games and also offer the ability to create a party? Because like what else bond, help us bond together than watching together a, a game, a really cool, cool game, right? 
Yeah, so it will be really nice to see all the games uh, coming up so that we can schedule watch parties accordingly. Absolutely. So here we have a list of games that we have stored in calendar of our team. So again, we didn't build database. We didn't build a calendar ourselves. We only tap in resources that we already have available in Microsoft 365. And from there, we show these uh, games in our app. Wow, super cool. So you just get data from calendar using Microsoft Graph API and that is all. Exactly, exactly. And what's more, we also have the parties. And the cool thing is that we also store them in a calendar. So does that mean that we need to have two calendars? I think we don't need two calendars here. We can use one calendar and as you know, we can categorize events in Outlook calendar events. So um, in our case, we use only one calendar to keep all of the upcoming NBA games. Plus, we use the same calendar for scheduling watch parties. The only thing we do is we categorize the NBA games as blue category and we categorize the watch parties as a red category with that when we are calling microsoft graph api we are creating our query with the filter we are only getting data with the blue category for nba games we do the same filter for watch parties we filter on and only get red category games, uh, red category events for the watch parties. With that, actually, you don't have to write an additional code to filter the upcoming data. Plus, you only get the data you want. Uh, you only get the data you need from your calendar. You don't have to load a huge amount of data from the calendar, and then you don't have to work on the code to filter around and so on. You just change your query with the graph and that works perfectly fine, which is the case for us. Perfect, right? So with that, we can really optimize the data that we get in our app and not get anything we don't need, right? Yes, definitely. Perfect. So the cool thing is, is that with Microsoft Graph and Microsoft 365, it's not just about us getting the data from Microsoft 365. With Microsoft Graph, we can also create data. And in our case, we wanted to offer the ability to organize a party, which means creating an event in calendar. So how about we do that? We yeah, have an nice upcoming point. game. We have, we, we have a game upcoming for the Bucks and a Heat, uh, right? Yeah, so seems like there's no watch party for Bucks and Heat. So let's create one for, you know, our party group. Party for, for Bucks and Heat. All right. Uh, attendees, who's going to join us? Um, Lola. Lola, okay. Uh, Lola, Lola, she is she's in a list. Why is she in a list? Uh, uh, Lola. Bucks, buddy. Bucks, all right. We, we pick Bucks, okay. Duffy? Duffy. All right. Let's oh, invite Granny as well. I heard she's really into NBA games. And Lola was there too. There you go. She awesome. is here. Okay, cool. So our game starts on May 27th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. All right, so we pick the 27th and let's give us some time in advance to chat, catch up with our friends, so let's say 6 p.m. That's good. And then the game will end on 27th, uh, 9.30. So let's say we're gonna stay until 11, just to have fun, talk about the game afterwards. And body will, will say, bring snacks and drinks. And we create our watch party with everybody invited. Three, two, one. One, and there you go. And our party is created here with everybody in there. And for everybody we, we invited, we already see their avatar. Again, we haven't created any of that in our app. It's all coming from Microsoft 365 exposed to us through the Microsoft Graph. Awesome, so you just use Graph API to create calendar event. Now it shows uh, the upcoming events and our new event too, which is great. Absolutely, so how about we dive into code and see how this app is built? Yeah, let's check out the code how, and see how it works. Perfect, so let's start with our fans. The way we get fans, is that all we need to do is to issue this one call, right? So with this, 
we reach out from our app in an authenticated way because um, um, again, none of the data that we see here is available anonymously, right? We don't want everybody to see our email addresses, our meetings, our files. So all of that is, 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 is securely available to us because we authenticated in this app as Marvin, who already is a part of this group. And with this so, single Walter, call, question. Yep. Um, are you getting this data from our team's group? We just check at the beginning. Absolutely. So in here we can see, right, that we get, we reach out to a group. This is our group, trust us. Mm -hmm. And in, in here from that group, we get get members of this group. And for everybody, we get their uh, display name, we get their email, job title, location, and so forth. And we get all of that in a single call. Awesome. Cool. So another thing, and I don't know about you, but like whenever I join a group, like I am new, right? So it's always hard for me to put faces to names because like for them, I'm just one new person, but for me, like it's everybody's new. So we thought, hey, what if we made it easier to show next to every name a face? Yeah, it's always better to see people's profiles with images, especially when you don't get a chance to meet them in person. Exactly. And the cool thing is, is that is that, is that in our app that 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 we have built, we can get pictures that they have already stored as a part of their account in Microsoft 365. And again, for that, the only thing we had we have to do is for all fans that we got in previous call, we now iterate through all of them, and for every fan, we get their picture. And this is again just another call to Microsoft Graph that gives us back their picture that they have set. Wow, this is super cool. So it is another graph call to get images uh, for people. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so with that, an another thing that we have seen are the bodies, right? So how do we find a body? Let's check out. Let's check, check, check it out. So the way it works is that first we, we get fans and we already ha have them in our app. Then we said, hey, we want to find a fan who is nearby you because we don't want to deal with time zones and like people waking up when somebody else would go, go to sleep. So we want to find a person nearby you, meaning the same location. So for that, we first need to get profile of ourselves. Then we compare the location where we are with the location of the fan. So in other words, from all the fans that we have available in our team, we, we want to get fans who are close to us. And then from there, we pick a random one. This is super cool. Waldek, did you create any database to store this information? Where do you keep, keep this body information? Right, so that is another thing that we wanted to do, right? We didn't want to do it in a way that every single time you open this app, you will get different body because that, that, and, and that would be awkward, right? So instead we say, Okay, when you will get a body assigned, we are going to store that info. And we didn't need to create a database. We can store that in OneDrive. So again, there is a call that we can do to Microsoft Graph that will, will allow us to store some info for our app, basically the same way on your disk. When you install an app, that app has a location on your disk where it can store its settings, files, and, and, and so on. So the same way we can do it here. We have a special location for our app, and in there we we we, we can create create a file, and in there we can store whatever info we need. In our case, info about the body that we got. So with that, we don't need to create anything else. Just one single call to Microsoft Graph, and we can store that info in there. So everybody stores their own information. Nobody stores someone else's information. Everyone keeps their own body uh, information in their own OneDrive. Is that correct? Exactly. Exactly. So no one else can see that except you. This is super cool. So it is just another graph call in our app, and we can save this information in our OneDrive. Awesome. Absolutely. And then the last thing that we had was games, right? So we, we, we talked about games and calendars and the way we go about it, right? So we said that, well, we don't need to create two calendars, right? So how does that work? How can we get two different kind of events from, from a single place? Yeah, so as we discussed earlier, 
uh, instead of getting the entire calendar data and trying to filter the data around in our code, what we did when we are creating the graph call, we add a filter in our query saying that we only want the blue category uh, data, blue category events for games. Same thing for the watch parties. We call the same API, but for the watch parties, we filter the data for red category. With that, we don't need to write an additional code. It is again just one single graph call and you get the data you want and you only show the data you want. And so with that, you can actually see that Microsoft Graph API is really flexible for filtering, ordering, all this stuff. And it is really easy to customize the data you are getting uh, from Microsoft 365, which really helps for our case. Absolutely, and 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 I'm seeing here another cool thing. So in Microsoft Graph, like you can think of the graph as the name says, of a kind of web. So in our case here, we get events. But who do, who do you have for each event? You you have attendees. Attendees are people. People have pictures. So in this case, we can jump from one type of info that we get, events, to people. From there, we can get their picture. And in context of work or school, you can imagine that from there, you could get insights into the files they work with and who created them and in which, which team they are and so forth and so on. So you can traverse the whole web from one asset, find additional insight relevant for the context of your uh, app or work. Yes, this is definitely amazing. And with that, actually, you give more insights to your user. And it is important because when I open this hub, I would like to see who's invited to which watch party and who's uh, coming to this event, that event. It is really important to see more insights, especially for the users. Absolutely. Hey, so there's another thing I wanted to ask you. This app looks great. How much time did you spend on it to make it look the way it looks like? So I can say for each part, let's say uh, for Toon Squad fans, for NBA games and for watch parties, if we consider them uh, three uh, categories, we only spent three lines of code. We use different. What? Yes. <laughs> so. To do that, we actually use a very different uh, solution other than just calling Microsoft Graph. We use Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So what, what is to Microsoft you, Graph Toolkit? Great question. Just to show you a little bit and explain what is Microsoft Graph Toolkit, uh, I prepared slides for you. Microsoft Graph oh. Toolkit provides us a set of web components and authentication providers that helps us getting all of the data from Microsoft 365 with just one line of code. As you see in this example, we only use MGT login and MGT agenda. With that, we get the user profile after login and we also get the full agenda events. That means if you don't want to handle the authentication piece, also if you don't want to handle calling the graph API plus, or maybe you don't want to uh, handle the front end, you're not maybe really good at the front end, which I'm not much. Uh, I can use graph uh, toolkit web components to get all this data uh, handle the uh, graph call as well as to show with pre-built UI. So Hold on. there are Hold really on. great. To yeah, recap, you're saying that all you need is these two lines of code and you're done. You don't need to do anything else. That's wow. right. So there are a couple of benefits um, for Microsoft Graph Toolkit. As you know, we are getting the same data when we call Microsoft Graph. Why should we use Microsoft Graph Toolkit, right? So first of all, as you just said, uh, you just add one line of code to do everything at once. That means you don't have to write very long uh, amount of code. You just add one single line and the data is there with a pre-built UI. It looks really nice. It handles the graph code, the authentication, everything for you. Another benefit is that Valdec, as you know, it works everywhere. So let's say, uh, you're a JavaScript developer, I'm an Angular developer, React or Vue, uh, you can call Microsoft Graph uh, Toolkit components and providers in any web framework and any modern browser, they will work, it, which is amazing. 
So um, another thing, Waldeck, I see that in our app, uh, it doesn't really seem like our previous example. Um, in the previous example, we see the calendar items and uh, they are really looking like Microsoft, Microsoft experiences. The look and feel are like really Microsoft experiences. How did you do that? Right, so with MGT, you have basically three options in which you can um, adjust things to how you want them to look like, like, like in your app, right? So in our case, like we show the list of events um, and right. So in here you, you can see that we adjusted the way things are shown and you can do it in three ways. So one is you can choose attributes. So you can say for, for example, in our case, like if I go to, for example, the li uh, list of games, right? If, if we open that, like in here, you will see that we chose to um, group our games by day, right? So in here, we added an attribute, and that changes how Microsoft Graph Toolkit shows events in our app. Another thing that we can do are is CSS. So in this case, we have adjusted fonts, we have adjusted the colors, and you can do it with 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 um, CSS. And finally, another one is templates. So in our case. For the overview of games, we wanted to show some additional info like the start and end time, attendees, and so forth. And for that, we defined a template. So we said, hey, for each event that we want to show, which is here, apply this HTML block. And in there, we have access to all the data that we retrieved uh, from Microsoft 365, meaning things like the, like, um, um, the location, attendees, but we can even apply functions so that we can show things like a time range from the start and end date of an of an of an event. So with that, we 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 can fully adapt it to the needs of our app. So what you're saying is that Microsoft Graph Toolkit components are customizable. Is that true? Absolutely, in three ways. In three ways. So. <clears throat> Even though when we use Microsoft Graph Toolkit components with one single line of code, will it still bring us all the, let's say, calendar events or files? Absolutely. So by default, when you apply them, they already work and they show info in the way that works, that looks basically the same way any other app in Microsoft 365 does, right? So Microsoft Graph Toolkit has been built to resemble all other apps in Microsoft 365, so that it's easy for for users to work to work with with um, 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 with the apps you you build, so that they don't need to relearn a uh, new UI. They can just dive directly in your app, and then know exactly what is a person, what is a calendar, and so forth and so on. So they they will see the familiar shapes that they already know. So in this case if you would like to customize the components, the way they look, the way they behave, you can use attributes, templates, and the CSS, um, but they will also work the way you apply them with one single line of code. Valdek, I have a last question for you. Mm -hmm. Now, until now, we only see our uh, gathering hub for ToonSquad fans as a web in the browser. What we would like to do is just using this app in our Teams group. Is it possible to use this web uh, web app in Teams group? Absolutely. So the cool thing about Teams is is that you can bring your existing app into Teams. So with that, you don't need to keep track of URLs and locations and bookmarks and and whatnot. You can have everything available within the context of the place where you are or already in. Meaning in this case, Microsoft Teams. So with that, let's go to our team, right? This is the team that we have already seen at the start where we have bugs, where, where we have everybody in our fan squad. And in here, we have added additional tab. Now this tab is actually our app. So let me make it bigger a little bit. And in here we can see that our app is now available in context of our team. We don't need to go, we need to, don't need to browse any URLs. We have everything in here and all the options the same basically as when you open the web in browser or the app in browser is available here here as 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 well 
So we don't need to go back and forth between Teams and the website. So our app is available as a Teams tab in our group, which is amazing. Absolutely. Everything in single place. Yes, that's what we like. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we have seen uh, we um, how we have built an app with Microsoft Graph, Microsoft 365, Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Where would people go if they wanted to learn more about what they can do, what's possible, and how to learn more? Great question. I have another slide for us. Next. So if you want to start deep diving about Microsoft Graph, if you want to learn everything about Microsoft Graph, how it works, how you can build the authentication and try to practice hands on a little bit, we have great uh, learn paths for you. The first learn path is fundamentals of Microsoft Graph, which you will see what is Microsoft Graph. You will also experience using Microsoft Graph a little bit uh, with hands on practices, and you will understand the concept of graph a little bit more. If you're interested in seeing how we use Microsoft Graph in different scenarios, you can check out JavaScript scenarios learn path available on Microsoft Learn. With that, you will see what, what kind of Microsoft Graph APIs we use in which scenarios and you will experience how to consume Microsoft Graph in JavaScript apps. Also, the last thing we show uh, with Valdec today was Microsoft Graph Toolkit. As you see, it's a really easy way of building authentication, calling graph, everything goes with one single line of code. If you're interested in building really less code and let's say you want to get all data from Microsoft 365, you can check out the Lost Learn module, with, which is develop apps with the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. With that, you will see how you can easily build Microsoft Graph, um, how, how Microsoft Graph Toolkit experiences with one, two, let's say maximum three lines of code in HTML, and you will get all nice looking data from Microsoft 365 with pre-built UI. Also, if you're interested in trying out the Toon Squad fan app we build with Valdec, you can check out Make Your Own Watch Party and you can try out this app by yourself. Try to customize a little bit, maybe add new features. Our app is available uh, on GitHub, so you can add uh, new versions. Maybe you can just try to change it the way you like. Maybe you can customize the styling. So there's a lot you can do by yourself. With that, this was our what's next step. Let's have uh, Justin back. Well, thank you, Aicha, and that was an inspiring session, Aicha and Waldeck. Thank you. I learned a lot about the graph. In fact, I think I may even try it for my next uh, my next application. Such a rich uh, data set to explore and such. Um, so, some couple questions that we heard uh, that are common. Uh, the first one is, can I use any programming language? I want to call the Microsoft Gra Graph API with Python or with another language. Share with us a little bit more about how you get started there. You want to go first, Waldeck? Sure. So you can use 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 the Microsoft Graph in any language you want. Like we have SDKs for .NET, we have SDKs for Node, we have SDKs for JavaScript, Python, PHP. So the common la languages already offer an SDK. Now imagine that you will manage to find a language that for which we don't have an SDK. Microsoft Graph is a REST-based API, meaning you can call it from anywhere you want, as long as you can issue a web call you can use Microsoft Graph in your app. That's awesome. Yes. No, go ahead, I said Tari. So well, one last thing I want to add, in, in the Microsoft Graph documentation, you can see available tutorials for all the SDKs and platforms uh, Microsoft Graph supports. There's no limitation of consuming Microsoft Graph in any kind of app, as Waldeck said. Just uh, try to consume it in any language you're comfortable with. Yeah, that's yep. that's great. Any any language will do, and that uh, means that you can begin with what you're familiar with, and then explore the new things about the Microsoft Graph. Um, another question is: Is the data private? Maybe t share with us a little bit about what is public and private on the Microsoft Graph. Yeah. So. Um... 
In Microsoft Graph, the initial step we have to complete is the authentication. We always build authentication first. That means we require a user's permission uh, with user's credential. Um, after the authentication step, we will be able to show users data as long as they give us the permission. So in this case, none of these data is public. Your data is private and available only for you. As long as you give the, uh, the permission to the app, you will be able to see your own data. So Waldek, do you want to add anything else? No, you covered everything. There's nothing more to add to it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, that's great. And one of the attendees, Mohammed, says, is it for MS Access? I'm pretty sure it might be a joke, but uh, but that's pretty funny uh, as well. The point is, is you can consume it any way uh, that you like, the Microsoft Graph. Um, let me also ask, is the graph free? Yes. So the cool thing if, is that if you already have a test environment, let's say you subscribe to our Microsoft 365 developer program and you get a test environment, meaning a tenant in which you are the admin. You can do whatever you like. You can try everything that we have to offer. There is no, no additional cost to it to you um, to use Graph. Very cool. Anything to add, Aicha, there? So uh, Microsoft Graph is totally free. I can end that. <laughs> TLDR, it is free. <laughs> uh, very, very cool. Well, um, you mentioned that being able to develop the graph for a web application or for Microsoft Teams. Uh, what about maybe perhaps more advanced scenarios like using Azure serverless architecture or things like that? Maybe share with us what is the range of different ways by which you can use the graph? Yes, that's a great question, Justin. Um, it is also one of my favorite areas to consume Microsoft Graph. Um, Microsoft Graph, can, as you know, it is consumable anywhere. It is not only for um, web apps or mobile apps. You can also consume Microsoft Graph in, let's say, Logic Apps, Azure Functions, or you can even consume Microsoft Graph in Power Platform, let's say Power Automate, Power Apps, or Virtual Agents, if you would like to build apps mm -hmm. um, for the productivity purposes. Let's say you want to uh, build a bot or you want to build a flow where whenever there is an event coming up in the calendar uh, your flow uh, in the logic apps check your availability and then decide whether you are available or not it, it can automatically send a response to the organizer there are a lot of exciting scenarios we can build using uh, azure serverless part like logic apps azure functions plus the same thing applies to power platform you can consume Microsoft Graph in such uh, exciting scenarios. I'm sure some of the students will be really excited consuming Graph in such platforms. Yeah, one of the things uh, I've been trying to experiment with is the low, no code platforms like Power Platform and such as well. And so uh, you don't even have to be able to write code, or certainly you can explore different platforms uh, regardless of where your skill level or where your, your passion is uh, as well. Well, speaking of other different ways and uses of the Microsoft Graph, what about uh, what about third party or cross platform uh, support? So uh, we had an attendee ask about Discord or other other types of software collaboration systems like that. Is the graph supported there? Um, so, so, so actually Graph is only for the data that you store in Microsoft 365. Well, with that said, you can build applications for other apps that will tap into Graph. So kind of combining the power of your app and Microsoft Cloud and bring it together into one. Um, and, and again, like that ties back into what I just said, that you can use Graph anywhere. So imagine you build mobile app. Maybe you even want to build interactive game, right? When you can game with others and at the same time communicate with your team in a way, right? So if that group of folks, if your team would be on Microsoft 365, you would be able to uh, facilitate that through the Microsoft Graph. I see, very interesting. Well, Mohammed, uh, a build attendee, is also asking, is the graph supported for Power BI desktop? Yes, of course. Um, and actually, it was one of my projects a year ago um, because in the 
let's say uh, when you get all this data, especially in this COVID time, uh, we may require a little bit more information about, let's say, the call quality in Teams or if the attendees join in the meeting or not. So you can consume Microsoft Graph either directly in Power BI, which you can use OData, or you can consume graph in different areas, like maybe you can consume graph in Logic Apps, which can load data to Power BI, so you can build a different connection there. But totally, if you want to directly consume graph in the Power BI, this is also possible to do that. Just It works just like another REST API. Yeah, I love just how flexible it is, regardless of what uh, software you use and such. Uh, you can call the API and use a range of scenarios. Uh, well, if you make the point of you can use multiple APIs, that's what's so incredible about software is that we can combine things uh, as well. Uh, well, we have another question around beginning. I'm a beginner and I'm not part of an organization or Microsoft 365. Uh, is there sample data or a way that I can get started and explore? I think this is something Roger. Waldeck mentioned at the beginning. Um, so we have a great program called uh, Microsoft 365 Developer Program, which you can register for free and you will get a free tenant for Microsoft 365, which means you don't need to be a part of work or school environment to test Microsoft Graph API and learn a little bit more about it. You can just um, register for Microsoft 365 Developer Program. You can get the free tenant and you will also get the free admin account. And in this tenant, you will have the full access to everything. There you can also create sample data um, so you can see there are people chats in the teams. Also, you will see there are some emails coming back and forth, but they are also sample. Um, I think Microsoft 365 developer program is the answer for starters if they're looking for trying a little bit uh, of consuming Microsoft Graph, understanding how it works, what kind of data you can get. I think Microsoft 365 developer program is the first. I think the second one is Graph Explorer. If you want to understand how Graph works, go check out Microsoft Graph Explorer. That's what I can And say. third, And third is keep in mind MS Learn. On MS Learn, you will get learning path that take you from zero to 100 or 60, depending where, where in the world you are, uh, explaining you the Microsoft Graph, what it is, what it's for, how to authenticate, what's possible and what not. So you will have a structured learning experience guiding you step by step through learning graph. Yes, I love I think, Microsoft Learn. Oh, go ahead, Aisha, sorry. No, that's fine. I just want to say that if you don't want to remember all this you're saying, if you don't want to check out, you know, Google it or Bing it, you can just start with Microsoft Learn Path, which will show you what is where, how you can register to Microsoft 365 Developer Program, where you can find Microsoft Graph Explorer, and you will see everything step by step. Just start with the fundamentals and it will take you through until the end. That's great. Thank you, Aisha, and thank you, Waldeck. Well, I think that comes to the conclusion of our session. I was really inspired by it. I really want to try uh, Microsoft Graph myself, and I just love the basketball and the Looney Tunes character scenarios you made. Uh, 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 an experience like this so fun and approachable and easy for beginners and people who are looking to explore the Microsoft uh, Graph as well. So this comes to our last session uh, that is happening here in the next couple hours. Thank you so much, Aichen Waldeck, for presenting this as well. Our next session is going to be led by Chloe and Morgan. It's Make Your Mark, Contribute to a Community Project using make code and JavaScript. And what a great topic to finish our series here at the Student Zone at Microsoft Build. Again, uh, you can check out any of our sessions on demand, uh, really engage in collaborative coding and check out all of those resources at our GitHub repo and our Student Zone as well. You can find that at aka.ms slash studentzone21 or uh, 2021, excuse me, or aka.ms slash student zone on learn for those Microsoft Learn modules. So again, thank you and appreciate it and have a good morning or evening to you as well. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.